who's been given a go to open the payload bay doors, which they are in the process of doing at this point. Firing chain is armed, sound suppression water system activated. T minus 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And zero and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis, reaching the crest of its historic achievements in space. And Houston Atlantis is in a row. Roger, roll. Houston is now controlling. The roll maneuver is complete. Atlantis is in a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. And the three main engines on Atlantis have now been throttled down to 72% of rated thrust as the orbiter prepares to pass through the uh, area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. The engine's now beginning to throttle back up. Atlantis, you are go at throttle up. Copy, go at throttle up. All three engines looking uh, really good, back at full throttle now. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle, boosters, and external tank weighed four and a half million pounds. It now has burned uh, half of that liftoff weight in propellant. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight, all three auxiliary power units that provide hydraulic power to the orbiter's systems in good shape, as are the fuel cells providing uh, electricity to all of the systems on board. Atlantis is already 19 miles in altitude, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 20 miles traveling, 2,500 miles per hour. Coming up on staging, the point at which the twin solid rocket boosters burn out and separate from the orbiter. Booster separation confirmed. The U.S. Air Force was deeply involved in the Space Shuttle program since its inception and throughout its three decades of missions. As early as the 1960s, Air Force research into rocket-powered aircraft like the X-15 and the lifting body capabilities of the X-24 demonstrated that aircraft design could translate into space vehicles. The increasing cost of single-use space launch vehicles prompted NASA to develop a reusable space plane. A reusable space transport would be an efficient way to precisely place and repair orbiting satellites. By the mid-1970s, Air Force requirements for launching satellites influenced the shuttle design. Research and development culminated in the first space shuttle mission in 1981. In every decade of operation, collaboration with the U.S. Air Force helped the shuttle program thrive. Air Force funding supported the shuttle program at critical budget points, and Air Force expertise and technical talent supported design and construction of launch and tracking facilities. The Air Force also provided recovery and rescue services along with qualified astronauts. All of these ensured the viability of shuttle operations. Shuttle astronauts trained for their missions at the Johnson Space Center near Houston, Texas. Johnson Space Center is home to the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, which houses simulators, vehicle mock-ups, and shuttle trainers. All shuttle astronauts trained in the Crew Compartment Trainer, or CCT, now on display in the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. The CCT is a replica of the front part of a shuttle orbiter, where the crew flew the shuttle, 
lived and worked, and where the astronauts sat for launch and re-entry. Countless hours were spent in the CCT, practicing for any potential situation they would encounter while on their missions in space or during launch or re-entry activities. In the CCT, astronauts learned the location and function of the shuttle's 2,000 controls and instruments. Because the shuttle's interior was modified for each mission, astronauts had to be retrained each time in order to be familiar with storage compartments, tools and instruments, and the function of all controls. The CCT was also used for ascent and descent training in the case of emergency exit during launch or landing. Firing chain is armed, sound suppression water system activated. T minus 13, 12, 11. The shuttle crew compartment is divided into two main floors or decks, the flight deck or upper compartment and the mid deck or lower compartment. The flight deck is the space shuttle's nerve center. The cockpit, flight controls, robotic arm control, and satellite launch controls are all housed on the flight deck. The mid deck is where the astronauts lived and worked. It is where they ate, slept, exercised, performed experiments, and took care of their personal needs. It is also where everything required for the mission was stored, mostly in a number of specially designed lockers. The crew compartment trainer, in which all shuttle astronauts trained, was brought to the museum in 2012 and is now part of the space shuttle exhibit. The rear sections of the shuttle, the payload bay, tail, wings, and engines, were assembled on site to demonstrate the size and shape of the real shuttle orbiter. The exhibit includes multiple platforms to allow for viewing into both the flight deck and mid-deck levels of the CCT. The payload bay features Teal Ruby, an actual formerly classified Department of Defense experimental early warning satellite. Um, Rick Sturko indicates the shuttle has... The space shuttle program to came to an end in July 2011 after a remarkable 30 years of exploration. Collaboration between NASA and the U.S. Air Force helped make the shuttle program a success, and the crew compartment trainer was vital in preparing astronauts for their missions. Main gear touchdown, pilot Jim Dutton. We hope that you enjoy touring the space shuttle exhibit. Please exit this area to your right, where you will see the entrance ramp immediately ahead.